Hello, podcast listeners. Welcome to what is officially the last episode that will be released under the name The Western Reviews Podcast. I've recently renamed the show The Pick a Flick Podcast, which I do mention during this recently recorded segment with my frequent collaborator John from the Movie Lovers Unite Podcast, where we discuss a bevy of topics including the Superman title renaming, the Dune Part 2 box office forecast, which since said recording had one of the best U.S. box office opening weekends for a Hollywood film since Barbie last year, remakes of The Crow and Bob the Builder, Puerto Rico. and yours truly's official announcement at the end. Now, with that in mind, I do want to say thank you to everyone who has tuned into the podcast as I've just accumulated over 2,000 downloads overall this past week, and there will be lots more to come down the road. Now, without further ado, let's get on with the show. Enjoy. So, hello, movie lovers. So today, I actually have Western Review podcast with me. We're going to be talking about Superman. They did a title change today. James Gunn just announced that today. We also have the Pro remake that's coming up. And of course, it's going to be facing off against another movie as well because it's going to be coming out in June. So with further ado, let's go ahead. Let's get on with the show. And hey, Western, how are you? Doing pretty good, man. How about yourself? I'm doing pretty good. So I just want to say welcome to the show. It's been a while since we were able to do a show. So as I do appreciate you being able to do this movie segment tonight. So... James Gunn took to Twitter. He winded up saying, hey, look, Superman is no longer going to be Superman Legacy. It's now instead going to be Superman. And my first what? initial thought was this, is the fact that I like it. I like the fact that they're just calling it Superman. They're not calling Man of Steel. They're not calling it Dawn of Justice. It's just Superman. Keeping it yeah. short and simple into the fact of they might be going back to the roots of who Superman is. And also, to the Fortress of Solitude. This looks like he's busting out of the Fortress of Solitude. So he could have been frozen, and all of a sudden he just gets defrosted. I don't know what's going on with this new Superman thing, but I'm happy that it's just going to be called that. Uh, what's your first initial thoughts whenever James Gunn went on ahead and announced that, hey, look, um, we're going to go on ahead and uh, rename this? Well, let me let you in on a little bit of a secret. It wasn't James Gunn that came up in my feed when I first heard of the announcement. It was all the entertainment trades and all the articles talking about James Gunn hypes up brand new Superman title. And I was like, oh, oh, snap is actually happening. He's going to rechange it. I thought we're going to stick to Superman Legacy. Then I clicked the article expecting, you know, some big grand title. And to my surprise. <laughs> <laughs> How do you like but, the title? I like the simplicity of it. I, I don't think that it's had a title that short since probably about the past four or five decades. So exactly. it's a breath of fresh air. It doesn't really give too much away because I feel like a lot of titles for some movies kind of gives away what goes on within the movie. So that's quite different. Um, so you're just coming into it cold, which just interests me a little bit more. Same here. I'm actually happy with it. It actually gives me a little bit of Christopher Reeve's vibe because of the very, very first Superman movie was just called Superman the movie. So they kept it short and simple with that. I think that's the way to go about it. Just keep it simple. Stop doing these long ass titles. Nobody gives a shit. It's just a title. You don't have to have a long title to actually sell your movie. But there is something I want to talk about, though, as far as this movie goes, though, is the fact that it is going to be an expensive movie to make. We actually have this going over to. Based on the, now this is actually coming from Comic Book Resources, and it's responding to a fan question of who quoted the budget as $364 million. The director declared that the claim's absolutely not gotten replied with the laughing emoji. He continued, How in the world do you think they know what our budget is? And so it's averaging between $150 million and $200 million. So that's pretty much what they usually do go for, if you think about it, if you look at the context of a superhero film. Stuff like that it goes between those two but let's say for instance in order for a movie to be successful it has to uh, basically make money within the one week or two weeks of the film being out not only yeah. that but you take a third of what it actually uh, made and then it go then it, because of the fact that the movie theaters take some of it and then the rest goes into your pr department goes into other departments but also too i didn't think about this right uh where basically you're also paying for catering you're paying for the actors to eat on set you're paying the you're also paying for what 
the actors, uh, for the actors as well. So you have all yeah. that coming into one budget. That's true. And my thing is this. Okay, so I understand that reshoots is actually scheduled in with the budgeting. So my thing is this. I think that you should just do $130 million uh, cap on it, and that's it. Otherwise, you're going to go way over budget. I'm talking to you, Aquaman, who ended up doing over seven reshoots and bombed at the We box. don't talk about that movie. In fact, I forgot there was an Aquaman that came out. <laughs> don't worry. I'd, I'd rather see Aquaman 2 than Madam Web. So. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, then. But, you know, what do you think about that, though, about if they were able to just do this with a $130 million cap on it and not reshoot anything after that, I think that they would be a lot more successful going in that way. But like I said, you're looking at budgeting, you're looking at the PR people, you're looking at the catering company, you're looking at every yeah. single thing that they have to work in within this budget. And yes, reshoots are part of the budget. Right. And that's not taking into the fact that there's also a marketing cost. I, I feel like over and especially with the budget, just going over your limit probably won't have a good result, especially if the movie, you know, turns out a bit underwhelming. So I think, you know, $130 million. I think so too, because here's the thing. You need to make this thing happen you, because of the fact of how bad DC has been in like the last couple of years. They need a home run. If they do, if they, if they strike out with this movie, that's it. This game over lights out. You might as well just wrap up the whole entire thing. James just needs to go back to Marvel and that's it. <laughs> if that's the case. But I'm rooting for this. I'm rooting for James Gunn. I'm rooting for this movie to be successful. I never root for a movie to feel or anything like that because I believe that a movie has to needs to be a success. And if if comic book movies feel and bomb, they're not going to make anymore. And Marvel, yes, you have been bombing. Yes, people have been fatigued because it's not comic book fatigue. It's the fact that you're not putting out quality stuff. You're doing quantity over quality. And you're not putting in quality stuff or anything anymore. And that's why people are not going to see your films. So that's, the, the that's where case, it lies. And in the matter of probably not a good balance. So. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, that's just my food for thought as, as far as the budget goes for this movie and things like that. Uh, so what do you want to talk about next? Uh, well, did you want to mention the latest casting? Really quickly? I'll let you do that. Okay, well, I forgot the character's name already, but Wendell Pierce from The Wire is going to be playing character. Uh, uh, Perry White? Name? Can you have a Perry White? Yep. Uh, I can't, I don't remember that character's name. There's so much about something. I, I'm just like, that's because about you didn't have. Hey, I don't blame you. You had more, more you, you actually had Morpheus from The Matrix, and they're playing uh, Perry White. So I don't blame you for forgetting who Perry White was. It's hard to top someone in that caliber. Uh, you right. know what I mean? It starts with Superman, then Lois Lane, then Lex Luthor, and then the characters so, are in and out. But still, I'm excited that he's going to be part of this. I'm excited that he's going to be Perry yeah. White. And yeah, I think now it's time to actually start thinking smart. Start Instead of being reactionary to every single thing. And I think now that they're actually paying attention. So, and having James Gunn doing this and everything. Uh, Doing this, being in charge of uh, the DC properties, I think it's a good move. For sure. Looking forward. So, so uh, any other thoughts as far as Perry White's casting goes or anything like that? Oh, the wire memes are going to be crazy. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. <laughs> so, I want to go over this for a minute here. So, we ended up getting some pictures here. We ended yeah. up getting some pictures of the Crow remake. Uh -oh. And I'm going to tell you this. Our, my friend Vengeance, uh, uh, Matthew, from Vengeance Media, sent me this picture. And at first, I'm like, okay, this doesn't look so bad. I can deal with this. You know? This was like the first image that I got from him. Was this one right here. Okay. I'm like, okay, I can deal with that. He has tattoos on his chest and stuff like that. You know, I can deal with that. Because of the fact that it feels like a rock star. It, because rock stars have tattoos. It fits in with Eric Draven and everything. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, I'm fine with that. I don't see the controversy with it. And I'm thinking that's like the only image that I see for the rest of the day. Then all of a sudden I take my lunch break and everything. <laughs> and then I get... I was the lunch break. 
it was good until I seen what I seen. <laughs> well, show and, us what you seen. Okay, so <laughs> what I've seen was this. Yes. Which yes. looks like uh, the Joker from the Suicide Squad. Now, the haircut itself is fine because of the fact that it does resemble somewhat of what the James Obar comic of the Crow is. But the tattoos on the face doesn't, and the whole look of it just doesn't look good. I'm going to be honest with you. The look of the new crow does not look good or anything like that. I think it's, I think it's horrible. And now, do I think this movie's going to suck? And I'm not going to say that it's going to suck or anything like that because it's not fair because all I'm seeing is pictures. And, and I said the same thing whenever Bill Skarsgård played Pennywise and whenever he had the costume. I said... I'm fine with the costume. I was fine with the look. I was fine with everything. But with this one, I'm not sold on. I'm not fine. But there's a difference between looking at a picture out of context, without any movement, and making judgment saying, oh, that movie's going to suck because of this. I'm not sold on the look. I love Bill Skarsgård. I loved him in John Wick Chapter 4. I liked him as Pennywise. But whenever I look at this and I see what I see, I'm not digging what I'm looking at. And I want to, I want to be hurrah. Yeah, this remake looks awesome. But this movie has been through development hell since day one, mm -hmm. since they even thought of it. We had Jason Momoa playing. Then you had Jude Law. You had the guy from Boardwalk Empire come. You had directors leaving <laughs> back and forth. Yeah, you had different wow. actors leaving. Jason Momoa was attached to it. And guess what? The studio went bankrupt. Then they had to find another place to actually go to. This movie has been through developmental hell for like the last 12 or 13 years to the point where the door keeps on spinning until somebody ends up saying, I'll do the film and I'll go on ahead and take care of it. Sure. But, you know, like I said, it's not fair to Bill Skarsgård for the way it looks. It doesn't matter if they got another actor to play Eric Draven. It's still going to be the look no matter which way you put it. And also, too... My friend Joseph, I love my friend Joseph from Multiverse of Geekdom and things like that. And he goes, have you read the uh, comic for The Crow? Yes, I have. That is not Eric. I have not. I've, I've watched the movie over 100 times. I have it on Blu-ray. I've wanted to get the stale book, and that's the story for another day. Uh, but My mom has it on VHS. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, okay, let me show you this. So, this is what... The remake is supposed to be based off of. It's called the Crow Wild Justice comics, and it's by James Obar, who is the guy who originally made the very first Crow comic books. And so, basically, I guess he pissed on his own comics. I don't know what he did, but <laughs> I just, I just don't like the look of the comic book. I'm sorry. I think it's the fact it's the whole nostalgia thing for me, where I was actually grew around Eric Graven. Versus this comic book character. And I didn't know that this other comic existed. I thought it was just the Eric Graven comic. And that was it. And I thought maybe the other issues might have been just centered around Eric Graven. But when you look at all this and everything I'm telling you about. What, what, what do you think of the look of the crow? What do you think of this remake? And the whole idea of different directors and actors coming in. And then they're leaving. So I'm, I'm glad that you're able to have your sanity for these next couple of weeks because you do know the trailer is coming soon, right? It's supposed yes. to come out in June. So <laughs> just be prepared. Um, I don't really, I'm trying to come in with high expectations. You know, the show was a little bit before my time. I know it's a big, big hit movie. Was it, is it a cult classic? Or is it it's a cult classic, a cult, cult following. I was about 10 years old when I seen this movie. Not only that, but this movie didn't really make that much money. The original one didn't make that much money uh, in the box office at the time, 1994. Uh, let's see. I'm looking at the box office thing right now. Um, uh, because of the fact that I like this movie so much. Yes. <laughs> and I understand that it was a flop. At the box office. Okay, so... It was a $43 million budget. And how much did it And make? it made $50,693,000, million. With, so okay, yeah. so they made the budget back. And, Worldwide uh, total, $93.7 million. Right, and probably $0.96 cents probably could have gotten you know, a drink from McDonald's if you get the market right. secondary. 
But back to the, the my point earlier about the images. Um, I'm interested to see what to do with this. Uh, I'd have to go back and watch the original because it's been a minute since so I've seen it. Well, I've probably fall, fallen asleep to it originally. Uh, <laughs> and the images just looks like two completely different Batman movies. You got this big, you know, hunky, tattooed guy, hell of a Dark Knight villain <laughs> in one shot. And then in the other one, you just got, some, like you said, something off a of Suicide Squad, where it looks like your two leads are in two completely different rooms. It just... <laughs> doesn't look all that interesting, but again, their images, I'm, I'm willing to give it a shot. Uh, hopefully they can do something with this. They moved the Dog on John Wick uh, spinoff film to next year, so it has to be. I don't know. Right. <laughs> but here's the thing, though. Now, you have something else that's facing off against the Crow, and that is none other than Bad Boys 4 is facing off against the remake of the Crow, which tells me from a studio's perspective, the crow is going to bomb, and they're not afraid of the crow. They, they have a feeling that this film is going to bomb. So therefore, all the money is going to go into Bad Boys 4. Because of the fact that this is a billion-dollar franchise between Martin Lawrence and Will Smith. And they have yeah. more faith in that, and that it's going to do well, than the crow actually passing them by. Now, what would actually surprise the hell out of me is that Bad Boys 4 fails to perform and it goes to the crow. Now that would surprise see, me. That's a nightmare for me because if Bad Boys 4 fails, I would feel bad for the people behind the crow because they might get a very special visit from Will Smith that they don't want to get. <laughs> I'm just going to leave it in this. I'm just going to say what William himself. <laughs> Use your Keep. imagination. <laughs> Keep your movie to yourself. Yes, that's, that's the clean version. <laughs> yeah, that's the get it version. But still, I that would surprise me if you know if that bombs, if Bad Boys Four bombs, and the remake of The Crow actually succeeds. And I'm hoping that it The Crow does succeed. But it, when you're comparing to apples to oranges, you're going to go with Bad Boys Four because you already established these characters. Through the all three of films, not not saying that you didn't establish Eric Draven from the first Crow movie or anything like that, but this has this franchise has been going on since the nineties. Yeah, and this one also too has had uh, different people playing d different character versions of the Crow. There's been four movies of the Crow. Oh, four. Straight to the uh, two theatrical runs and one straight to DVD. Re uh, no, three straight to DVD releases, I believe. <laughs> See, I don't remember that mean. One with Kirsten here. Dunst. <laughs> there was that. That was part three. Part four was with John Connor, the actor, which is a horrible, horrible movie. John Connor. Yeah, John Connor from Arnold from Terminator Two. Uh, the yeah, actor who played John he's, Connor. He sounds like a Highlander character, but go on. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> Uh, he was actually he played the in the fourth Crow movie. Uh, Christian Dunst played in the third one, which is be is be actually better than the fourth one. Believe it or not, I actually put that one ahead of Part Two, and then uh, Part Two had a theatrical run as well. Mm. But my point is, though, you're remaking a film that nobody really asked for when everybody is really loving the franchise of the Bad Boys Four franchise. Yeah. So. So, if I'm going to have to say anything, I think that The Crow is going to wind up fault failing. Which Let's is see. why Blake a movie Williams. moved this release date from that. Movie. Blake Williams. I like The Crow movies. movies. Here's the thing. I love the first Crow movie. The Crow mo the very first Crow movie, with, uh, Blake, you know, I'm going to be straight up with you. It got me into Soundgarden. It got me into Nine Inch Nails and, uh, and, and independent industrial music, which I'm happy yeah. it did. For, for the very first movie, and I love the very first one, and I even want the scale book for it because that thing looks sexy as hell. Um, but <laughs> and you know, and I also have it on Blu-ray. I also owned it on DVD. I also owned it on VHS. So I've yes. been through all the stages of the crow. With, you with are a crow thing. super fan, and I like at aspects of the second one, and it, and we do have Thomas Jane in the second one. Uh, mm. Before it became the Punisher, before he was established as an actor, in that one too, it just didn't 
land for me the way I wanted it to. And I guess I do own the second one. And I also own the third one. And I have to say, out of the two of those, those are better than the fourth one. <laughs> so, but yeah, if I have to be honest with you and everything, I'm rooting for this thing to succeed. I, and looking at pictures in the co- and stuff like that of the remake, and I don't know how you feel about it, Blake, or anything, comment in the comment section because it doesn't matter what we think. It matters what you think. So I want to know what your full opinion is of the pictures for the remake. Because it's one thing to see pictures in, uh, that's out of context and stuff like that, especially when we haven't seen a trailer and people are saying it sucks. But I'm being a little bit more open-minded to see a trailer first before I judge something that I've only seen for like five minutes. It's one thing to say, yeah, this looks bad. And I did that. It's one thing to say, this movie's going to suck. How do you know this is going to suck? You haven't seen anything yet other than still pictures. So just be a little bit more optimistic, a little bit more open-minded a little bit. Let it marinate a little bit and see what you get. But anyways, uh, so we're going to go on ahead and go into our next subject here. So our next one is Dune 2. Dune. And I love the very first Dune movie. The Dune 1, I loved. I loved the whole entire wide-angle shots. Okay, this is what he says. This is what Blake says real quick. Uh, Blake says it doesn't look good, but I'll keep an open mind to the trailer. Yeah, that's all we have to. Mm-hmm. That's all we can do is just be an open minded to the trailer, see what they give us, and I'll even do a trailer reaction to that as well, and put that up on the channel whenever it gets released, and I'll give you my full initial thoughts of what I think of it. But yeah, so let me go on ahead and talk about this for a minute. So Dune for me, I really loved it. It just opened at a bad time because of the fact that number one. Max, this HBO Max decided to put everything on streaming and everything. For a movie like Dune to succeed, you have to have it in the theater for that theater experience. That's the whole point of Dune because of the fact that it's such a, a, a episodic movie, to be honest with you. For sure. And it's got sci fi elements in it. It also has religion, it has different ty- characters in it. It has these wide-angle shots of the desert. It has different beats that deserves to be on the big screen. It does not need to be viewed on a smaller screen, on a smaller scale, because it makes it feel small in scale. Yes, I can have the best sound bar, the best TV, but you're downing it down to a scale to where you can't see everything. And this, and that's what I have to say about Dune 1 is the fact that it's a great movie. It deserves to be out in theaters for people to see. The biggest mistakes that HBO Max made at that time before Zasloff came around and destroyed everything that everybody else is doing right now. But they were putting everything on streaming services. And you don't make jack shit off of streaming services or Mm -hmm. anything. You don't even make your budget back with streaming services at all. And so that was one of the main beefs that I had with the fact that they decided to do that. And they lost money because of it. And it also made Christopher Nolan leave because of the decisions they were doing and stuff like that too. And so with Dune one, it made about 400 million somewhere around that area. And it did good. But I think that this time, I think it's going to end up making more than that. And that leads me to my question. Do you as any audience and also to you, Western, do you think (laughs) that this movie could make a billion dollars? Ooh, that's, that's a toughie. That's a toughie because and remember it is, grows twelve million in Thursday previews yeah. before officially opening everywhere else in North America today, and doubled the fifty five point one million gross in previews by Dune in two thousand twenty one. Although the movie was was hobbled both by the pandemic and the decision to distribute, like I said, on HBO Max. Right, and that's the thing I was about to get into. So uh, it seems like uh, Max, since they want to take the HBO off the title. They're just Max now. Uh, it's trying to do something similar again by putting uh, Dune on streaming relatively early this said spring. So forecast it could be out by the end of April, early May-ish. And I think they should probably just let it breathe out in theaters for a little bit before putting it out in streaming. That's really the big factor, the big concern that I have when it comes to this having the chance of making a billion. I'm not saying that it's not possible, but the fact that Max, once again, is trying to put it on streaming <laughs> early than it should be. Right. And here's the thing. Okay, so maybe what I'm thinking that Zasloff or Zoloft is doing <laughs> is this. 
I'm thinking that, okay, we're going to put this on streaming, but maybe people might actually like, like it enough to want to go ahead and get that big screen experience from a theater. So maybe they might want to go ahead and check it out on a bigger screen because they've already seen it. They already know what they are expecting. So maybe they might want to go out to the theater. My only thing is, why don't you just go ahead and put about 20 minutes on, on max, get them a taste of what they are expecting and then take it off. When it gets to a good part, snip it. (laughs) Yeah. And then you go to take your butt over to the theater and you enjoy Dune 2 if you're that much invested into it. And then you delete the sh- short clip within a month or two. And then you up- right. put the uh, whole movie up on Max. That's the way I, that's what I'm thinking. Right. Because if Nicole can do it, uh, Nicole Kidman can do it, you know, so can you. And I think they put Nicole- a preview out there already. <laughs> <laughs> oh, am I? T- Hey, Gomez. Yeah, uh, we just got done talking about The Crow. We're now talking about Dune 2. And uh, you can go on ahead and rewind it back and everything if you want to watch the, us talk about The Crow. But if you have any questions or whatever, we'll also be taking that too as well. So go on ahead, comment below, and we'll take your question if you want to. Um, sorry, that's a quick one. No, 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 it's fine, Gomez. I understand you're doing a podcast as well. So that's Gomez from the Sleepy G Show. Go on ahead, check him out on, on the YouTube channel and everything too. Uh, but yeah, um, I just want to say, I think that Dune has a potential of hitting that billion dollar mark because of the fact that I know everybody's like, well, Rotten Tomatoes is not a good source for getting anything. My thing is this, I always pay attention to the audience score versus the critic score because the audience score is the one that I pay attention to the most because I am an audience member. So therefore, I pay I, attention I to that score. Too. So yeah, so therefore, that's what I would do. And because so, I'm not a higher tier critic getting endorsements, so I am still an audience member. <laughs> by the way, you can reach out to me at movieloversunite at gmail.com and thank you, AMC Theaters. Um, but, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, what I was going to say was this. I think that it can make a billion dollars. and I th- Especially with it being 95% on both ends. And this is the first time there's not really a split between the audience score and the critic score. And both right, sides love it. The critics usually in the 90s. And the audience right. is usually in the 80s. Right. So it's rare to see that. Uh, I'm excited to see Dune 2. To be honest with you, this is actually... And I, and some people are like, well, I don't know if people would actually spend money to go sit through a three-hour-long movie uh, or anything like that either. But I'm like, here's the thing, though. If you go on ahead and give us a good plot, a good story, and everything, and make us feel invested from the very first Dune movie... We will sit our asses down in those seats and watch Dune. Now, movies like The Irishman and stuff like that and um, Killers of the Flower Moon, yeah, it didn't make much or anything like that. It's a great; Those are great stories. They're entertaining. But I wasn't something that people, I think, were glamoring for. Doom is something that people are glamoring for because of the episodic type of vibe. From it. Now, what do you, what do you think? I agree with you, man. I, I enjoyed the first Dune. Um, <laughs> since this is an alien story to me, I did not know what was going on. The characters were new to me, but I really did enjoy the whole scenery, the production design. It was very crisp. The cinematography was very strong. Uh, it left you a bit on the, on, the, on the cliffhanger, expecting what would happen in you know, this one. So I'm looking forward to see what they do here. Uh, hopefully they give some more characters more screen time and more development. I may or may not be talking about Zendaya with that. But I'm just intrigued. I'm fine with the fact of how they ended it with Zendaya because of the fact that they're going to give her more establishment in the second one. They're just trying to say, look, hey, we have this actress in this movie and she's going to be a bigger part in the second second part. And so therefore, and I'm used to watching TV shows. So the way they cut it off was perfect. If someone is going in for the, like, the cinematic thing of it not just not just ending and everything, yeah, you're going to be disappointed. But because of the fact that they just ended it and I'm used to watching TV the way it is and they just cut it off and end it, I'm just fine with it. So um, so what else do we have? In the pocket? What else? Do- so we actually have, we had talked about how The Crow is battling up against Bad Boys 4. We talked about J- Dune with the box office forecast. We also talked about Superman changing their title. Uh, let's see here. Now we are going to go on ahead. I know that you were talking about Bob the Builder. 
<laughs> Having his movie? Yeah. He is. Why? He's getting a remake. Well, I, <laughs> you know, it's the trend. They're bringing things back. Uh, you know, as as someone who is uh, Gen Z, I've had a enjoyment of doing a lot of childhood shows. I'm about to build a response. Um, except that, you know, in this version that they're trying to do, they're trying to make him, a, you know, a Latino uh, Bob Builder. His name is Roberto. And uh, Anthony Ramos, who I believe is going to be in the Twisters uh, remake movie that's coming yeah. out this summer, he's yeah. playing the role. And Jennifer Lopez is one of the producers. Uh, <laughs> so I, I think the story revolves around Bob trying to go home with, you know, with, his, with his friends and tools and stuff. They, they try to get it to where he is. I, I'm not sure. The plot's kind of murky now. It probably will change. Um, I don't know why it exists, <laughs> but here we are. The last update we had about it is that uh, there's a bidding war between, uh, I think DreamWorks is in there, Amazon, and I believe Netflix. Netflix or Paramount? The three big More than likely, probably Paramount, Paramount, I think. Yeah, yeah. But my, my thing is, why didn't they make one about Handy Mandy? He's an actual another character from my childhood growing up that's actually a Latino character. Why didn't he get a remake? <laughs> Bob has turned into a Latino. It could have been a crossover. I'm, right. I'm confused. I'm confused. But I'm sure I, it's just one of those things that I just won't understand when it comes down to things like this. Also, too, are kids even watching Bob the Builder these days? I don't even know. They, it, they've had so many show spinoffs of it. I don't even know if there is one kind on. But if it is, I'm sure somebody is watching it. It's not Paw Patrol. It's you know, Paw Patrol. No. Is the way. But, but <laughs> yeah, my son watches uh, Paw Patrol. He also watches, um, let's see, he also watches, uh, we broke him out of Ghibli, thank God. Um, we, uh, <laughs> we also do Blue's Clues, and that's it. He doesn't really yeah. watch Bob the Builder. But I'm not just trying to use my son as an example of saying this. <laughs> That they shouldn't do it, but I'm, or that that because my son doesn't watch Bob the Builder. <laughs> no, my son watches Paw Patrol, and they've had two successful movies. The last one made over a hundred million dollars worldwide. Why not? It's like no one cares about you, Bob. Go back and build something. <laughs> but as Handy Mandy cries in the corner, <laughs> I wonder if that's why they didn't do it. They didn't make a Handy. I wonder if that's why they decided not to make a movie about Handy Manny. Right, probably not as recognizable as Bob. And <laughs> no, it's the voice think actor about it. was uh, Andy uh, Manny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and his voice actor is a, a strange fellow. But yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, I can see why it would go well on the poster or the captions. <laughs> We're going to make a Handy Manny. And people are like, who's Handy? <laughs> I just don't know. I think about it. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. You got it. <laughs> but okay, I want to talk to you about something else, though, too. Do you see Deadpool making a billion? Now, Deadpool is yeah. a possibility. Wasn't the last one? I don't know how much the last one was. Was it close to making that? Or did it? Hold on. Let's see. Did, did uh, Deadpool 2 put that in? Okay, so it made $785.8 million. Close enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So it made bank, it made its money and everything. So yeah, I see it making about a billion probably with this one. And it helps that they got Wolverine on board this time. Yeah, and that's gonna give everybody to go in there and check out uh the next uh Deadpool movie though too. As well. Because I'm excited for this new Deadpool movie. I'm excited the fact that they got um Hugh Jackman back for that role and got him out of retirement. Just yeah. so Ryan Reynolds can troll him the whole entire time and they can <laughs> yell at each other. That's going to be so, Yeah, I, I'm definitely excited for Deadpool 2. Um, I'm trying to think if there's like anything else that I wanted to talk about, though. Too. In advance, no, Bob is not going to make a million. <laughs> no, 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 no. He's better off making his, building his own bank before he even <laughs> decides. Uh, he can build stuff. He can fix right. stuff. And no one else can build it but Bob. All right, yeah, but Bob is not getting there. It's good with no. me, though, is going to make it this year. But, not Bob. <laughs> but okay. 
So I think that's everything I had wanted to talk about as far as this goes. Um, I think that uh, I still going to hand, basically going to go ahead and say this on the record that Dune 2 will make a billion. Okay. Everything. I, I, I believe in it that much that it will make a billion. I think the crow is going to wind up not performing like a, like, even though we have a cult falling of that film. Um, yeah, bad Boys is going to be a threat. Yeah, Bad Boys is going to be coming for the crow. So uh, then the la- uh, then the new Superman title, we both agree that we both like the title. So yeah, that's pretty much it as far as this show goes and everything. Gomez will be joining me on the 10th. We're going to be doing a Ghostbusters 1 review. But before we end, Western, I'm sorry, man. I forgot at the very beginning that you have a little bit of an announcement to make. So what's oh, your announcement? Right. You're going to make a Handy well, Manning I, movie, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been funny if I was thinking about it. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm making a Handy Manning movie. <laughs> Featuring Michael no, Bay. That, oh, no. No, we can't get him on that. <laughs> Everything starts exploding. No, we can't have that. <laughs> no, uh, my announcement is that uh, I, I'm happy to announce uh, my new name for well, what is going to be used to be the Western News podcast. Can you give me some drum roll, please? Uh, how about this? I got a better one. It sounds like you're knocking on a splinter. Hold on. <laughs> oh, you're wrong. You go. <laughs> go on ahead. You're th- I am going to be renaming my show the Pick a Flick Podcast. <laughs> we talked about this. Yes, you we know, did. You know, it's going to be yours truly. The nickname is going to stick, of course, to Western Wonder, but it's going to be a different show. Uh, I'll have a flick of the week that I'll select in advance. Uh, and we're going to talk about that particular flick and get my thoughts on it. I figured that it would uh, be a good, nice little name change so people that are experiencing, uh, that wanted to experience Western films, <laughs> as in bang, bang, shoot them up or not, movies that are Western media. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want it to be disappointed anymore. It was it was time for a change. So the Pick a Flip podcast will be the name is going to be in place. <laughs> okay, that's great, man. I'm happy for you. I'm happy with the title change that you're doing, and uh, <laughs> with the theme song announcement. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So it's actually going to be Pick the Flick, Pick a Flick podcast. So go on ahead, follow him on all social medias and everything, and uh, do what you do, man. I'm proud of you. Hey there, this is the Western Wonder again recording an outro. I hope you all enjoyed this episode. Now to stay updated under my new show's name, which is the Pick a Flick Podcast, you can follow the show on Twitter, aka X, Instagram, TikTok, and even for potential letterbox mutuals at Pick a Flick Pod. Let me spell that out for you just in case you need it. That is P-I-C-A-F-L-I-C-P-O-D. Stay tuned for more reviews to come, and until next time, this is the Western Wonder, signing out. Peace. Bye, have a great time.